the Foundation Festival is gearing up, and as of today, the 6th of July, we've got a pretty spectacular 12 ships to fly for free. You can access these whether or not you've currently got a Star Citizen game pack, so if you're new this is one of the best chances to get in and try the game out. And if you're not new, you should still take advantage of all the free ships. I'm going to quickly break down how to get signed up for the free fly, and then take a look at each of the ships on offer. So if that sounds good to you, then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, and then let's get into it. First up, let's take a quick look at how to access the FreeFly. Head to the main robertspaceindustries.com website and click on the Foundation Festival welcome link that you'll find on the main page. Then scroll down just a little bit until you see this play for free tile. If you're an existing player, you'll just need to follow the sign in link to get into your account. But if you're new, click on the enlist for free button, which will prompt you to set up an account. This is all you'll need to get involved and play until the 17th of July. If you are creating an account, just be sure to use someone's referral code when you do. My one's the one up on screen right now, but if you've got any friends who play already, please just ask them for theirs. It'll get you a nice bit of extra starting cash, but you unfortunately can't go back and add one after the account's all set up. You can then get the launcher downloaded and hop into the game, so let's take a look at the 12 ships you could be flying in just a short time. I'm not going to be going through these in any particular order, but I'm going to kick things off with one that's likely to get a lot of folks excited. The Drake Vulture is a light salvage ship aimed at one person, but works great with two. It's perfect for just getting in and trying out the new loop. It's currently not available to buy at the in-game ship shops, so I think it's really cool that they've added it to this free fly, letting people give the gameplay a go. You can try your hand at finding or making some wrecks out in the wild of your own, or you can use the salvage contracts found in your contract manager to buy locations info for derelicts and get straight into the whole scraping action. Trading has made a really big comeback as a profession in the 319 patch as well though, so it's great that we've got what many would consider a solid entry level trader, the MISC freelancer on this list. It can haul 66 cargo boxes worth of freight, making it perfect for those small to medium sized trade runs that the bigger haulers might not be able to hit up. But if you're looking for just a little bit more space in the trade game with 114 SCU, or if you're just after one of the coolest daily drivers, then the Crusader Mercury Star Runner could be just that. The main focus of the MSR is meant to be data running, but we're yet to see this gameplay enter SC, so for the meantime it makes a decent fast hauler and run around. I just hope you like doors. But if you're wanting to take trading to the highest level, you've also got access to the Drake Caterpillar. With a carrying capacity of 576 SCU, the Cat is the second largest hauler in game. And while the Crusader's Hercules C2 tops it with 696, in my humble opinion, the Caterpillar makes up the difference in pure style points. But if it is those pure style points that you're after, then the Origin 600i Touring might just be the ticket. This luxury space yacht is perfect for anyone who's just here to get around and see the sights of Stanton. And I have to say, for me it wins the best Master Bedroom in Star Citizen award. Keep in mind that with three size 5 weapon hardpoints, it can also be a bit of good fun for those looking to do a little bit of lazy combat. Just don't expect to be going toe to toe with any light fighters. Because if you really want to test your dogfighting abilities, then you'll probably be more at home in an Aegis Gladius. The Gladius is one of the S tier light fighters in game currently and given its starring role in the upcoming single player campaign Squadron 42, it's one of the ships that's received the most polish so far. If you feel more in the mood for some ground based FPS combat, then the Anvil Valkyrie could be your ticket into the hot zone. This infantry dropship can comfortably deploy a squad of marines and even a couple of ground vehicles like the Tumbrel Cyclones to support them. Everybody's got their own favourites in SC, that's one of the things which makes it awesome but the Valk very definitely for me makes my top 10. As a side note, while its primarily intended function is obviously militaristic, the Valkyrie makes an excellent transport ship for anyone using the rock mining buggy to try out a bit of mining gameplay. 
but if you liked the sound of cracking rocks as opposed to cracking skulls, there's good news in the form of the Misk Prospector. In the same way that the Drake Vulture is the entry point into the salvage profession, the Solo Focus Prospector is the first stop in the ship-based mining game. From the pilot's seat, the operator has full control over both the ship and the mining laser, allowing you to quickly transition from scouting to cracking to scooping. In something of a two-for-one deal, we've got the Drake Cutlass Black and the Drake Cutlass Red. If the Valk made my top 10, then the Cutty Black has to make my top 3. It's the jack of all trades of SC. Not a master of any particular profession, but pretty decent at hauling, transporting vehicles and fighting, particularly if you've got a mate to take the turret seat. The red variant is focused on medical gameplay though, exchanging the Cutty's cargo hold for a pair of tier 3 med beds. These only treat the least serious of injuries, but the red can at least get you patched up and back on your feet after most little accidents. This actually makes it a perfect ship to take on bunker FPS missions, as 9 times out of 10 it will save you a trip back to a clinic at a space station. And the Misk Razor is where I ran out of good ways to segue between these ships, because it's a racing ship, and racing is one of those things for when you just want something completely different. The racing scene in SE is going from strength to strength, and now with racing missions in game, using tracks the developers have largely crafted based on community designs, this loop is more accessible than ever, and if you get half decent, it can actually be profitable. The Razor is one of the best go fast ships out there, with ultra fast acceleration and on point handling. So grab that first mission around Hurston and just give it a go. Quick disclaimer though, this is the one game loop out there where I think it's absolutely fine to be seen in a white noob suit. And finally, for our 12, we've got the Misk Starfarer. This industrial beast is a heavy refueler, allowing you to fill up your tanks with quantum or hydrogen fuel and top up your friends. In all honesty, there's not a lot of cause to use refueling mechanics in the Stanton system, since in the grand scheme of things it's fairly small and densely populated, meaning there's effectively a petrol station on every corner. However, if you are so inclined, you can get together with a bunch of your mates, grab some FPS weapons and armour, and revel in the fact that the Staff Arrow makes a perfect mini deathmatch arena. Sometimes one of the best things about SE is how you can use it as a sandbox to come up with your own gameplay. So if you're solo and want to try stuff like this out with a friendly bunch of people, then please do feel free to stop by our community discord using the link in the video description. So there we have our list of free fly ships. Let me know down in the comments which one's your favourite and if you're new how you're getting on and finding the game. I know that some people complain about free flies because of the additional stress that they put on servers, Honestly, I think they're really awesome, and of all the various events and sales and stuff that CIG do, I think the Foundation Festival with its focus on getting new players into the game and helping them out, is honestly just one of the best. It's a perfect way to say to friends, come and give Star Citizen a go without risking their wallet, and also all of this activity helps test the servers with higher population. This vid was a bit of a whistle stop tour, so if you are interested in any more in-depth guides or info about SC, be sure to check out some of my other videos, and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to keep up with some more. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.